speaking of Saturday appointments, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking on the radio with you about my dad was a lawyer in Orlando, started here in the 50s. So in the 60s, mm-hmm. as a young boy, I would go to the, his office with him on Saturday mornings to goof around and play around and his, you know, pool table up in his library while I met with Saturday appointments, like just like I do, like we do. And then always on the way home, he'd stop at a bar that was on a corner of Virginia in 1792. It's not there anymore. He would have a beer and he would, you know, meet and greet with people in the bar. You know, this probably be right around lunchtime or so. And I told you how my dad, he'd get a glass of beer with a foam on top and he'd take out a salt shaker and he'd shake some salt on the top of his beer. Well, I had a client last week. She goes, Tom, I heard you talking about that. I put salt in my beer, and it was delicious. Aw. Yeah. So she took your dad's advice. She like she <laughs> never heard of such a thing, and now she's completely hooked on it. You know what? Next time I have a beer, I had a beer last night, but I even I didn't think about it. I'm going to put some beer on the, salt on the top of my beer and see what it's like. I think you should try it. As far as I I'm <laughs> other than my dad putting salt on the top of his glass of beer, I've never heard anybody else doing it. I have not either. Where he got it from, I don't know, but I'm going to try it next time. My name is Rick Jordan, and I heard you talking about salt in your beer. Yeah. I was I was raised here like you are, and I had a stepfather who was in charge of Baker Groves over in Tavares, Florida. And a lot of the grove pickers would drink a beer or two before they started picking oranges after lunch, and they'd always put salt on top to help them with the sweating situation and all that. I just okay. And I started doing it when I was... In the Navy, a little bit on top of your can of beer, you take a little lick and drink your beer, and it was just delicious. Well, I'm going to have to I try that. Many, I haven't, haven't heard anybody else doing it besides, you know, from back, except from back then. But your dad must have been a Florida boy. You know, he was not, Jordan. He was actually uh, from uh, South Dakota. <laughs> And of course, he served. Oh, okay. He served. Well, he hey, served in the that, Air Force. Maybe so he it's might. Have... Old, maybe it's something the greatest generation had going on. Yeah. But we'll be in. We'll be in to talk to you about some some wills and stuff eventually. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. You know, a lot of people are like me, Christy. And that is this. You know, I remember when my mom and dad were both alive and. Like all kids, you think, oh, you know what? They're going to live forever. You know, why, you know, why ask them questions about their history, their past? Why did they do this? But, of course, my mom and dad are now deceased. But, you know, here's a situation where I should have asked them, hey, Dad, why do you put beer, salt on your beer? Where did you learn that? I'd be curious to know. It Well, I think that's really interesting about what Rick said, too. And think about it. Your dad grew up South Dakota and, of course, moved to Florida as an adult and he was doing it. And you're right. It would be very interesting to know, did he see that somewhere? So like Rick is saying, is this something that it was of that generation? Or again, was it something that was regional? Clearly, so that's interesting about the Let's give groups. a little, little lesson to all the listeners out there who <laughs> happen to have a parent or both their parents still alive. And they're thinking, oh, he or she are they going to live forever. Hey, folks, it doesn't work that way. So ask them questions now. Of our parents, our only living parent is your mom, my mom, and she's my mom too. And, you yes. know, we're always taking the opportunity to ask oh, her yes. about the past and your dad and growing up. I want to know that. Exactly. And as well, with our kiddos around, whenever I have an opportunity, something pops in my mind about our past, our history. I'm always anxious to share it with them because, hey, I won't be here forever either. I want them to know some things. 